Kyoto is known for many varying aspects in the country of Japan. It's known for its many favourite temples, home to the Buddhist religion, dating back way more than a millennium. It's also known for its colourful shrines and even its heritage sites. But in recent years, it's also had a virtual addition in the form of this wonderful circuit that we're at tonight. Because we're at Kyoto Driving Park Yamagiwa for round two of the Coates vs. Newsham Mini Cooper Cup. We've got a fantastic race ahead of us tonight. I say race, I mean two of course. And joining us in on the action as always, Mr Jordan, you're with us for tonight as you always are. Fellow partner in crime. We're looking forward to this one of course. Yeah, good evening everyone. It uh, should be a, a good race, or a couple of races, especially the reverse grid, because this track uh, produces very close racing, uh, mainly because of the slipstream it creates. It's a very slipstream happy circuit, uh, which keeps the, the pack tight. So you definitely, you definitely don't want to make a mistake that loses you time. No, absolutely. The slipstream being worth so much time around here, in up to about a second and a half especially in these Mini Cooper cars having not that much power. I believe it's 150 horsepower in these cars trying to thrust the way around this track. You'll probably be seeing lap times lower than the two minutes, but I think tonight, Jordan, we're in for one hell of a treat. Yeah, I mean, last time out, Lagamage, your race centre was a, a cracker. I mean, mm. me and you were practically losing our voices in, in race two. <laughs> um, I think... I think that's going to be key though, race two. How, the people at the back, how can they get through that pack um, without losing too much time and losing that slipstream to the to the leading card? Because let's face it, none of the drivers here are that slow. <laughs> <laughs> so if the top line drivers make can't make those moves work, they could find themselves in a bit of trouble trying to get themselves up that order. Mm. Oh, that's that's very crucial, Jordan, like you say. And I think if you, in this race two that will be coming up, obviously, after race one, naturally, um, looking at that, you can consider the fact that with race two, there's not going to be many opportunities to break away from the pack. You're going to need a partner. You're going to need someone who can work the strategy with you to try and break away. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there we are. I'm just messaging one of the drivers. No, that's not a problem. Obviously, we've still got a couple of drivers left to join into the session so far. I believe we are missing uh, two at the moment. So we're just waiting and watching to see how everyone else is getting on in these practice times. Les currently setting the current practice gauntlet at the moment on a 54.6. It's a very impressive time. His good friend and rival, Fourfish, right there with him in second currently. But we're still missing one of the race winners from last week, which is TNR Filo. We hope that he can join in tonight so he is the one driver that we're aware of we were due to have another driver joining us tonight but that doesn't seem to be happening so we are a driver down unfortunately but nonetheless we've still got some very very quick drivers out on circuit and i'm sure that jordan i hope has the championship standards to hand <laughs> uh, i will do and if you bear me one moment if i load up that sheet there um I, I do know Filo is leading the uh, leading the way. That's a very very difficult circuit round here. Obviously, Kyoto driving part Yamagiwa. It's got two two variants, technically speaking. Um, but then again, if you class the smaller circuits, it can add up to about six. You've got the driving part we're around at the moment at Yamagiwa, but we've also got the other smaller variants of the circuit, which adds up to another five corners, add that on, you got 20. But tonight we're just on the 15, and depending on who you're spectating on with the moment, obviously I can't see Jordan's screen currently, a couple of very key corners on this track, which we'll come to later on in terms of momentum and potential overtaking opportunities. But I'm hoping Jordan now has <laughs> <laughs> these tables. Yeah, so obviously Philo is leading the way. Um, hopefully he will be joining us. Um, He's on 37 points, Fourfish has 34, Les has 33, Bumper Cam Bob has 31, Stevie Q has 24, with Rally Matt also on 24. 
D. Whitehouse on 23, Bruce Lee Harding on 18. He obviously probably not showing the, the true pace of what he can do. Hopefully that will come around tonight. Uh, Snav on 16, Joey Dunlop on 15, not the motorbike rider. Uh, Waze is on 10 after that disconnect from race 1. Uh, and Traumatic Dave on 6 after, again, a disconnect from race 1. Uh, people not someone not on there is uh, Mad Marshall. Where is he to? On, is he on the circuit? Yes, he is. He's moment, in 10th. Yeah. Uh, he obviously was ill last week. He's better this week, which is good news. He's racing tonight to to help out his fellow Newsham crew. Uh, That's good to have Mad Marshall in, isn't it? To be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and. In terms of the team's points, uh, Coates is bleeding that 148 to 87, according to so, the tables. A very yeah, big margin. Work, work to do, work to do for the Nation drivers after round one. But that's the beauty of this league. There's 20 races overall across 10 week, 10 weekdays, of course, every Monday, and you know we've only done two so far. So there's a long, long way to go in this championship. For certain, I can just see it. Mad Marshall's actually just crashed into the wall. <laughs> Not really sure what happened there. I'm hoping he, he, he can go through all both races tonight because he did say earlier on that he's not 100%. Said he felt a little bit better. So I'm hoping that he can get some get some points on the board for his team and for himself primarily. Yeah, uh, I don't know if you want to check if Philo's online at all, uh, Jack, because he'll be on your friends list. Of course, I'll look. Um... Uh, I have messaged him, and I haven't had anything back just yet. Uh, Good to everyone who is watching, though. Uh, Dark Sykes, Ways, D. Whitehouse. Uh, should be a good, good round here. Yeah. I've driven a fair few races around there, and all of them have been with great battles. You always find yourself in a battle of some sort, uh, no matter where you are. Uh, I was watching Traumatic Dave, and I like looking delivery on Traumatic Dave's car. Very uh, vibrant, and lots, lots going on with it, shall we say. Uh, and as you can see, if you if you haven't seen this series before, you see on the cars they've got different uh, two different stickers. So, Traumatic Dave, you can see on the front there, he's got the CN16 denoting that he is on Team Newsham. Uh, and if we go to... Uh, and can Bob, you'll see it's got the Coates 71 logo denoting he's on Team Coates. So that is how you will know which team each driver is driving for. Uh, absolutely, I've just sent a quick message over to Philo. He is shown online, but I will say Q qualifying in two minutes for the drivers just so that they they know is it is it worth doing what we call an old school qualifying jack just in case yeah if you if you remember that so um for anyone who's who's watching those and obviously philo might may just be running late from a from a work thing or something obviously we want to try and get every driver in uh and the way old qualifying works is, as I've, had, as I've explained to Jack in the past, you use the pra you basically re almost reset the lobby so it's a practice lobby into into the race, and that still does the job of qualifying. Um, just it means people can join late in, uh, but it does mean that Jack will have to change the format from a practice qualifying endurance race to a practice endurance race, mm. and I think that actually generally sets resets the lobby anyway so you all, all you have to be. yeah so all, all we'll do we'll tell the drivers qualifying starts on the reset pretty much well the good news Jordan is that TNR Philo is currently on Call of Duty Black Ops so I suspect He's not going to join, so I think we can just do normal qualifying. I'll leave it in your hands. You you are effectively the room host. I can. Well, well, nothing, I've got nothing on my hands. Well, <laughs> Apart from off a keyboard. we go then. Off we go. Traumatic Dave has entered, which is good to see. That's nice. 
So drivers in for the lobby. Let's go. I'm really looking forward to this one. There's some really key overtaking areas on this track and I suspect that to be honest with you Jordan you know a couple of corners off the top of your head already where you'll be thinking that's probably where some of the action's going to happen yeah the, there's about I don't know three there's about three hot spots on this circuit um, and that is coming into the chicane at the bottom of the hill. That's that's generally a hot spot. It's a difficult overtaking manoeuvre, but it's probably the, it's the first one of the circuit where you actually have a, a decent braking zone, shall we say, because um, you put the car into third from fifth. Uh, then you're probably looking at the tight hairpin left, uh, and then the final corner will be a bit of a hot spot for switchbacks on the way out. Yeah, so you're obviously referencing because the drivers are now just coming towards this long left hander at turn six. Four fish leading a massive queue of cars, obviously coming down towards turn six. Everyone fighting over that slipstream. You can see everyone bunching up almost in pairs in a few places. So the first corner that Jordan, you obviously mentioned there, coming out of turn six now, down to turn seven. At the bottom of this hill, this is one of those prime overtaking spots, like you mentioned. Yeah, you, you might see a few moves at six, pending on the runs, especially on the exit, because you, you tend to set this move up through six. Um, you tend to try and make the driver in front of you go a bit tighter through six, which means that you can open up the corner and get the run in through seven and into eight. Uh, obviously up here, again, obviously you, you tend to need a good run out of the chicane of, of eight and nine to get the run up the hill, but this, again, is a tight happen left third gear in these cars, because otherwise your wheel spin too much. Uh, again, a potential spot. Now, this corner here, Jack, me and you both know this is a danger corner, 13 and 14. Um, Absolutely. I, you can definitely have an incident on your own accord or, or have a multiple multiple car incident through there if you're not careful. Uh, Absolutely, and that's, that's the one thing you don't want in, a, in one of these opening races. Um, you don't want to want to have a huge accident or anything around here. I'm just looking around the circuit uh, for where the drivers are. Seems to be a couple of gaps outside of that initial pack. Obviously, Dunlop's only just coming through turn five now, whereas the rest of the pack going on to their opening laps. Yeah, I'm going to pick up on the number 69 car. Uh, be Bruce Lee Harding. Bruce Lee Harding, yeah. Let's go on board with him for a lap this week. I know he tends to enjoy this circuit. It's a great circuit, really great circuit. It's just a really fast and flowing one, isn't it? That's, that's, I think that's what's nice about it is you've got this really nice flow and you don't have to have the same flow. Yeah, everyone can have their different flows around here, but uh, I'll let you take, take us on the lap there, Jack. Right, so Bruce now coming towards turn number one. This really tricky left-hander, fourth gear in these mini cars, and you can see Bruce just going a little bit wider but he's completely flat on the front which you can get away with in the mini no problem at all now turns two through to five this quick left right then left right again and you see Bruce just gone through the first part completely flat in these minis not a problem at all just peaking at 106 miles now as he comes now past the little Marshall post on that left hand side over the top now turn six one of the key areas of the circuit really to gain time as you can see, Bruce doesn't brake, just lets the car run wide, which is not a problem, lifts off the throttle and keeps the car momentum going there. Through an almost non-existent turn seven, practically, in the dry, right down this big dip towards turn eight, one of the key overtaking spots. Bruce upshifts to sixth, then down to fourth, keeps a higher gear, flicks the car in very quickly through the left, right, and then left again. Took that really well, did Bruce, underneath the banner. The car struggling for a bit of power on the way up, but no problem as he comes around the flat, turn 11, and then on the brakes, he's gonna to come to turn 12. There he goes, on the brakes, down to third gear, down to second, does Bruce, just to get the car turned. He went a little bit wrong with the line there, but not a problem, he's not lost too much time on this opening lap. See the time's rolling in on the left-hand side already. Flicks that car on the right, and then sets himself up for the left-hander, which is a different way. Like, you see the car sliding as he goes through the penultimate corner there. Gets away with it, not a problem, no momentum lost and then into the final corner again down to the third gear you can see Bruce running a lot more rear brake bias than the other drivers seems to be running maybe brake bias too but gets away with it nicely done in third gear that's a nice lap of Kyoto driving park Yamagiwa four fish on provisional pole for the time being with a 55.1 Bruce 
It's a 55.2. That's a very impressive laugh. Puts him fourth, but he's fourth and a tenth off the pace. It's, it's hard. And I tell you, you mentioned the sliding through turns 13 and, and 14. If you watch Snav go through it, it's all it's really difficult. The car starts to slide now. Naturally, you'd put some on, some opposite lock, and you can't do that in these cars. Front wheel drive. You point the steering wheels where you want the car to go and keep the throttle on, but then that introduces the the potential understeer. The same time, you can start oversteering and then create some understeer for yourself if you're not careful. Um, so very very nicely worked there from Bruce. Now comes across line one fifty seven point five. Puts him seventh in the mid. The black lap from Snav puts him straight firmly in the midfield. Just having a quick flick through. Joe Dunlop still gets a set of time. He's run wide out of the final corner. No harm done. Number three. He'll get another another attempt. He's got probably get probably another get two, two laps. Yeah, for, yeah for he'll get two. Possibly even three if he's if he's quick enough. If he can get below that two minute barrier, he might get three laps in. It's four drivers coming over the line, so four fish and the next three back will get another two laps in. Four fish doesn't go quicker. But Les, Les does. does, yes. D Whitehouse up to fifth. Next gen and Les. Lap. Up into first position. Well, Ways goes quicker. Seventh, yeah. yeah, ahead of Stevie Q. Bruce the highest Newsham driver to note at the moment. As we watch Les come up the hill, who else is crossing the line as we speak? There goes Marshall Mad Marshall. Goes yeah, 158. Yeah, that's not bad for Mad Marshall. He'll, he's the first to admit he's not the quickest out there, but uh, he's done a good job. Running Matt a little bit slower than we expected, especially from his practice at the moment. He's down in 10th with a 158.5. He can go quicker than that. We've seen that in practice. He, he, when I was watching him before, when we cut away and you were following someone else, Jordan, he did slow down. I think he made a mistake and just let someone through. Just watching him now as he comes towards sector number two. And he's, well, he's two tenths up. So he he lost that time coming towards turn number, obviously, turn 12. And that's where he slowed down. So I expect to see a big improvement. He's got a nice toe from Wace as well as Rally Matt. Snav goes quicker again. 56.5 for Snav. Keeping him in ninth at the moment. Now a bit of background on Rally Matt. He uh, he actually drives in real life, not racing, but he's a he's a rally driver in real life. Um, does rally a little Ford KA 1400 in the BTRDA Rally Championship. Uh, very very quick driver, rally win class winning driver in terms of the 1400 class. So he's definitely got the talent. Joey Dunlop's gone quicker than him though with a 158.2. Rally Matt is two seconds up on his lap time. No, four fish goes provisionally pole now with two minutes to go. 54 3 by four fish, good time. All these guys should get one more lap in. CBQ goes faster. Rally Matt up to third. It's more like it. But four fish, a three tenth of a second, nearly four tenths gap between him and Les at the moment. He was flying at Lago and he's flying once again. There's purple in the first sector. Matt Marshall Matt goes quicker. Improved. I believe he's now ahead, back ahead of Jerry Dunlop in the end. So great that's lap be... from Bruce Lee Harden. Up to second of that lap. That's a great effort. 54-6. Yeah, still three tenths away from four fish. But... Oh, Ooh, that's Matt Marshall. In the wall. That'll be the end of Matt Marshall's qualifying. Oh, we have to be careful. That was a bit close, but no harm done. See, Mad Marshall did as best as he could, really, there, couldn't he, Joel? I don't think yeah. there was much room he could have done with that. Snav coming up to the line. He's going to go, he'll be the... No, Possibly Joey Dunlop will get another lap. Joey Dunlop should get another lap, yeah, but I think, bar that, I don't think anyone else will. Well, actually, saying that, four fish might. Where is four fish on the track? Yeah, four fish, I think, should, should get another lap in. Four uh, fish, potentially Les as well. Bumper cam Bob 
D, D White House. Close, but he should get another one as well. So Joe Donald goes into eighth place with a 55-4. Good time by him. And um, to be honest, Jack, none of these guys uh, are really getting a toe. They're all a little bit spread out. Rally Matt and Waste side by side. That's game over for them. They're going to see the jacket flag. Matt improves. Good effort by Matt, 54 9. Bumper Cam Bob will be the last driver, or rather the second to last driver to set the lap time. D Whitehouse will be the last one. There's D Whitehouse, the Club 100 driver for Team Coates. Wicked little livery, that. Actually, that all the liveries are, are pretty cool in this series. See, so the guys got to design their own liveries as long as they had their team's sticker on the car. Mad Marshall. Bruce has seen the checkered flag. Mad Marshall is coming round. We'll follow him anyway. We, we know it's not going to be a better time, but we'll see him across the line. In his first outing of the season, he's going to stop, and I advise him to not be on that side. Because that is the ideal side to finish your lap on. It's just doing a practice start. It should go out of the way. Snav coming towards the line. Not going to improve. Small mistake on the lap then for Snav. Joey Dunlop, I believe, won't be any quicker. See, his car was under ghosting conditions, so I'm assuming either he's recovering from something. He's got a bit wide anyway through the last corner, so that's pretty much game over for him. Full Fish and Les coming around the final corner. These are the two currently first and second in the table. Les might be just about close enough to nick a little bit of a slipstream as well. Across the line. Oh, Les does go quicker, but it's not enough. Bumper cam Bob, he's going to improve. What a lot. Wow. He's done it again. Four fish by 93,000th second takes pole position. That's his first pole position of the season. Obviously, Philo took it last time out. On the front row again is four fish for Jordan. Take it away, friend. So here we go. We have 20 minutes of racing and the lights are on. We are green for the first time tonight at Kyoto. Who's got the best getaway? And in someone stuck on the grid. That looks like Traumatic Dave. We get off the line though and four fish holds on. And Bruce Lee Harding looking to the outside of Les with the slipstream of four fish. So we enter a little bit one. further back. See, just rally match. Just everyone looks like they've gone through okay. Traumatic Dave sadly out of the race. Yeah, everyone clean through turn one, which is a good start. Les has managed to hold position from Bruce. And we've got side by side between that is Bumper Cam Bob Rally Matt, who's also got a ways in the mix with D Whitehouse coming up towards turn six for the first time. Who's going to give way? Because you can have about three, four different lines through here. And they're three wide. Les down the inside of Four Fish as well. Ooh, a little bit of contact. Bumper Cam Bob's been squeezed wide. I'm going to replay mark of this so we can kind of come back to this in a minute because that is some incredible racing. Les has taken the lead and they're still squabbling over fourth place. Waze has taken it so far into the chicane. Back to the outside. A little bit sideways. Gets away with it. And Waze is now on the back of Bruce Lee Harding. Waze has had an absolute stormer of a line through the chicane. He's up into third place. I think Bruce tried to slot in, to be honest with you, behind trying to get a bit of tactics going on straight away, but it's compromised him and he's down to fourth as a result, like you say, Jordan. Bumper Camp Bob and D Whitehouse side by side coming towards turn 12 and 13. It's going to be, rather well, 13, 14, it's going to be very close. One of them's going to have to yield. Uh, to be, Bob. Yeah, you can't, you, unfortunately, if you're behind into that, you've got to sl stick it in behind. I don't think Dramatic Dave's too happy as he's had another issue. Snav and Mad Marshall side by side going through the final corner. Not Mad Marshall got gapped at the launch, but he's right on the back of the pack now, so he's got a friend to fight with. These two need to work together, though. They're both Nushim. They need to work together to uh, 
Speaking of two drivers who aren't working together, though, it's Wace and Bruce Lee up for third place at the moment. Wace on the inside. Like I said before, Jordan, in practice, Les and Fourfish, two close friends, already pulling away from this group. See at the moment, Rally Matt's just hooked in behind Bruce Lee and Wace. There's a little bit of contact between the two. Bruce Lee going over the kerb slightly through four and five. Has to be careful through there, and in fact, it's going to lose position to Rally Matt, who's now on the outside. Absolute train of cars behind the two of them. I think Bruce Lee had a little bit of a ghost issue there. He's actually dropped to seventh as a result. Yeah, there were three wide coming into turn six. Can't... Ooh, oh, bumper cam bobs into the, the grass. Just about rejoins, doesn't take anyone out, fortunately. Drops to ninth. Mad Marshall's in front of Snav, so I'm not sure what's happened to Snav on that one. The front two are gone, though. That's already... They've already pulled themselves out of 1.8 second gap. They've got that planned already. Once again, the Nushin boys didn't do themselves any favours between Wade and Bruce fighting over that third position. They had to get on with it. Bumper can bob down the inside of Joey Dunlop at the moment, though. Joey Dunlop wide and bumper can bob up into eighth place. Good move from Bob. Almost scared Joey off the circuit in a way there. Fourfish not yet done with Les, is he? He's he's probably working with him at the moment, but he he seems like he's got that attitude of I'm gonna work with you unless you open the door. If you open the door, I'm going for it, whether you like it or not. <laughs> I know, but and that's the that's the thing with these two, they should be looking back because Rally Matt and Wace have been undercutting one another through the last couple of corners. D Whitehouse now looking to join in the fun. So this is gonna be potentially free wide. In fact, D Whitehouse is going to try and go through the middle. But that just potentially, ooh, he just breaks a little bit, just backs out of it. Matt's gone very wide. Wace mm. is going to cut for the inside. He's got to be careful, D Whitehouse, there. Free wide! This, this is not going to work. This isn't going to work up here. A bit of ping pong up through the chicane. Or well, the S's, shall we say. D Whitehouse backs out of it. Probably the wiser move. But he's now got Bruce Lee Harding alongside him for good company. Here up comes over. Stevie Q as well. Look at the momentum Stevie Q's gained just from those three fighting. Make that four. Whoa, Bruce was almost looking through the middle of the two drivers there. Stevie Q passed D Whitehouse down the inside. Five really car battle move. for third place. Really good move from Stevie Q there. He just D Whitehouse just got a little bit too wide on the brakes. Because he wastes trying to now get a move up the inside to go into turn. <laughs> this is fantastic Ooh, already. Sideways from Matt. That's going to cost him a place. Wace is going to get a penalty for that. He cuts across the grass, just going in a little bit too heavy. Here comes Bumper Bacan Bob. Now they're all slowing each other down. This is not five cars, it's six. And if this carries on, it's going to be seven with Joey Dunlop not too far behind. Up the inside goes Matt now. Ghosting for the two minis. That, oh, Matt's got flying off the circuit. Got it completely wrong. Steve Whitehouse going onto the grass to try and get past them. They're going to be three, three wide, wide now going into 13 14. Someone's going to have to back out. Amazingly, Stevie Q managing to sneak between the pair as they go through the corner. Oh, this um, Jordan, this is absolutely superb. Bruce, so far. Bruce Lee Harding has found himself into the podium spot of third. Ways just behind him. These two need to work together. They're both Newsham drivers. They have to start working together now. But Ways not interested in that. He's looking for another move. This is not good for the Newsham team. They need to pull away and try and get up to the back of Four Fish and Les. And it's not working. They see Bruce flashing his lights to try and send a signal to say, let's go. You stay trying to catch up to the two at the front, Jordan. Five seconds is the gap after three laps already. There's no chance at this moment in time. They're too busy fighting. They had the chance to break away from this pack and they didn't take it. And because of that, it's going to be very hard for them to to do so. And Bumper Cam Bob now looking down the middle of the pair of them. <laughs> into turn six. Ways having to concede that one. And a little bit of lag coming into play for the chrome car. Yeah, just a touch. Brought D Whitehouse had a really nice line through turn six there. He's on the outside for seven. He's going to be on the inside for eight, of course. Ways has got to be careful on that one. He's very close to the front. Of the car four fish has got past Les, so they've just worked together on that one. I just saw that one. You I've see the, the car side by side. Oh, Joey Dunlop's gone that all wrong in the background through the chicane. We'll go back and have a look at that change for the lead in a minute. 
because they're now three wide coming up to the hairpin of turn 12, D. White House in the middle. Now, all three of these guys are Coates' team. So this is why Waze and Bruce have to start working together, because if these three are going to start fighting, they can pull clear here and secure themselves third and fourth, battle it out for the individuals later on in the race. Can they? They both got good lines through there, did the two Nushan drivers. But Bumpercon Bob, you, you fear for the, for the Nushan drivers, is he's got the pace by himself. To be able to catch up. He's got the pace, but the problem is if you keep with the slipstream at the moment, Bruce is starting to actually pull a little bit of a gap here, all on his own accord. But you have to feel if, if Bumper Cam Bob keeps getting nagged by D Whitehouse and running out behind, it doesn't matter how good you are. If you lose time in these things, it's very hard to gain it back. Mm. Meanwhile, I'm gonna uh, quick look back at the change for the lead. I'd say that, but it's, uh, it didn't catch it, which is a shame. Ah. Fourfish was already ahead at the time that I pressed my button. Yeah. Bit of a shame, but there you go. They're, and these two now have a six-second gap over Bruce Lee Harding in third. It certainly looked like a telegraphed move. I don't think there was any doubt about that. From what I could see, I caught it last minute myself. Wace is now up the inside of Bumper Cam Bob. I say up the inside, he was trying to defend, but Bumper Cam Bob's just got right round the outside of him, that's fantastic. Letting the car roll, but can he get it to the inside, because Waze does like this move into the chicane. It's going to be later on the brakes, but he's not close enough. Okay, it's very looking... skittish, doesn't it, the Mini, through that through that turn 8, 9 chicane, it looks very skittish, you it get the line wrong. Depends if what, yeah, it all depends on the line, but Wade's now back up in 2 fourth. He's still got to shake a point two a second penalty. So that has to be gone before the end of the race. As does Bruce Lee as well. Needs to be a new battle starting as well, further down. Joey Dunlop, Mad Marshall and Snav all together for ninth place at the moment. Looking at their lap times, they're not actually that far away from the from the drivers in the midfield, so race two already shaping up to be something juicy because this one's been fantastic so far. That it has been Les is also back in the lead of this race, four fish. I think they know they place. can fight. And again, the replays missed it. That's unfortunate. Oh, and I'm going to press my replay again because four fish has now got back past Les. And we have caught it this time for the pass of the lead. <laughs> Into turn one, pretty stock standard by four fish. Into turn one, has the inside line. Always going to make the overtake there. Les in second. Four fish up into the lead of the race. Oh, Matt Marshall and Jerry Dunlop at the moment, side by side through turns three, four and five. It's giving Snav an opportunity to just bump himself onto the back of these two minis. And whilst we're looking at that replay, Les has got back past four fish, so... <laughs> we won't go back and watch that. That's a bit... You'll you, you get away with that, Mad Marshall. Just literally two tyres on the kerb. It's allowed Snav to get a run, though. Absolutely action wherever you look at the moment. There's been a little bit of status quo in the last couple of, well, I say last couple of seconds, really, to be honest, in this mini fight, because Waste now is just starting to pull himself onto the back of Bruce Lee again. Gap was over a second, it's now six tenths as they go into turn 12. So, joining those live pictures, Bumper Cam Bob back down to seventh. I don't know what's happened to him, whether that's just a case of the slipstream trip. Oh, actually from got that all wrong. Yeah, I was going to say, DYS closed immensely on him through there. And Waze is going to have to start taking those penalties. He's now got one second. I don't know. I, I don't know. He may have actually picked that up through that 13 14 complex because it does give you them for that. If you've got. Even if you it lose does, time. He does keep tripping over himself through turns uh, 8 and 9 in the chicane. I think we've got Bob and Rally Matt side by side again. Yeah. Bob should hold on to that place though. But uh, I think for a switchback that corner, if you can get it right, you can get a run up the hill. All, all while this is happening, Bruce is getting away in third and starting to cement his place at the moment. Mm. He's got 1.6 to the to the 
battling pack, shall we say, as D. Whitehouse is now going to look for a move on ways into turn six through the outside. He was left on the right, left on the right, then on the left again. He was all over the place as D. Whitehouse looking for that move. Can Bob taking this higher line? That's just like allowed Matt to go straight past. Yeah, but this is a run out that Bob's looking for, and he's not got it because of that. It's um, it, it's a line that that line that Bob takes. That's tight. Very tight. And Waste once got again, it all wrong again, and he's going to go into the wall. Into the, he's going to bounce back off. Waze has got that all wrong, as you say, Jack. That is not the right line. Not a lot of grip on the grass, and Stevie Q should now pick up a place going into turn 12. The Waze down to eighth. He's going to have to hope he can rely on Stevie Q to try and slipstream back up to these three who I suspect now will try and work together to try and build a gap either onto the two behind or try and catch Bruce Lee. There's still time, and if they work together, they can certainly catch the orange car. Uh, Snav and Joey Dunlop close with, within a second of each other. Snav should be receiving some helpful slipstream there. Mad Marshall's made a mistake somewhere. He's about another further four seconds back. Um, there he is in the background. He just goes Y out of 13. Snap's got a two and a half second penalty. I'm not sure he's picked that up. Possibly th culminating through 13, 14. Because obviously be being on a pad, it's not not the easiest corner to go through. And, and it's a really weird, if you end up running wide, it gives you a penalty on the grass, even though you lose time anyway. So... Les still leading the way. And D. Whitehouse has gone board with him, because I can look back. That's Bumper Cam Bob, who's now looking for a move. He's also being entertained by Matt as well. Ooh, very close. Matt's found a little gap for the Mini to go through. He's up the inside. Still not quite cleared the white car just yet. Looking back from D. Whitehouse. Him. You see how much of a better line D. Whitehouse gets through that chicane because he's not compromised. Bumpkin Bob just about fending off the challenge. That was a very good move between between Bob and Matt there, side by side, no contact at all. That was really clean racing. Stevie Q and Waze side by side going into turn 12. Waze now has accumulated a 3.2 second penalty. Obviously, if he doesn't get rid of that, it goes up to 4. Hmm on GT Sports. I have to say, since he got away from the start earlier on, Bruce Lee at the moment, 4 minutes 40 odd to go on a clock. 1.8 to D Whitehouse. This would be a great drive if he can hold on for a podium. Well, yeah. I think these last few minutes now, these last, I'd say, two, maybe three laps. I think they're going to get three laps out of this, you know. Yeah. And sub-two-minute laps. Three laps are on the card for pretty much everyone, I'd say. Matt and Bob side-by-side side through turn one. Bob taking that wider line again. Matt's going to have the better, better line. Is Bob going to have the better drive? That's the question. Or oh, a bit of contact. A little bit of contact between the two drivers, but they've been able to keep themselves out of the wall, which is the key point. They're still side by side. These two have had a fantastic fight between themselves, despite all the chaos that's been going on around them. These two have found themselves glued to one another all race. Bob on the outside line. Again, looking be for that better run out. That, that wider line in, tighter line out. And he's definitely got a run. Is it enough? Not quite. Looking for something different. Is Bob there going through turn six? Oh, he's got that line a little bit wrong. Get away with it, As though. Matt. Both get away with it. But at the moment, they're going to start losing that slipstream to D. Whitehouse. And I have to say, D. Whitehouse is catching Bruce Lee. That gap's now just at a second. Yeah, that's about right, because obviously that slipstream doesn't really fade away until you hit about 1.5 seconds on this game. Especially in these cars, obviously only 150 brake horsepower. So, the tiniest bit of slipstream can do your wonders. The three at the back who were battling early on. Oh, D.Y. was in the barrier! 
sorry, Jack. D. Whitehouse has just come out of 14 and absolutely rocketed into the barrier. There it is on the replay. Now Stevie Q looking for a move on him. He's going to be kicking himself as Dave obviously was hoping to try and get a podium. He was cruelly denied at the final corner last week. He's been, been denied by the wall this time. Yeah, just a, probably just a little bit too much pace and probably a bit too much curb. And it just forced the mini out. And now back at the front, while the court cut over here, Jordan Fullfish and Les side by side going in towards turn six. Les on the inside, they're leaning on one another, but it's so far so good. Les currently provisionally in front, but Fullfish gonna have that outside line and a bit more momentum. No, he doesn't. He won't initially, but he'll have the run and the slipstream now coming down towards the chicane. He looks at the outside, will break a bit early, I suspect. We'll try and get a better line out because he'll get the momentum for going up the hill. And obviously with these cars not being that powerful, that momentum up the hill is crucial, as you can see. Ready for the turn 12 hairpin. He's got the right line as well. Les trying to squeeze him to the inside, but nothing that he can do now. Bullfish up the inside. Les going for that wider line, takes it tighter. He's got a good amount of momentum as well. Side by side, someone's going to have to back out. Oh, Ooh, contact, contact in. None of them Les. are backing out. No, <laughs> Les has just about <laughs> got in front, but this is it, this is going to be going on to the final lap in a moment's time. What a battle these two have had all the way through the race, it's tactically worked for them. They've got all the time in the world now to fight for this final lap. Unbelievable. Forfish Good immediately goal, looking to the outside, possibly for that better run up to the S's. Because, you know, that's what I'm going to call him now. Absolutely, he's on the outside. Is he gonna break later? They break at the mm -hmm. same time, in fact. That's fantastic. Fourfish possibly a bit later to keep it nose to nose on the entry. Come on, bumper cam with four fish. He's absolutely pushing Les through the S's, as Jordan so called it. Just, he's too close at the moment for that sort of run. He's gonna have to pull out and try and go for turn six on the exit. For anyone watching the stream, we are on bumper cam with four fish. It shows just how close they are. There's a better line through six, though. A much better line. Kept it tucked in. Matt and Bob still having a fantastic fight for fourth. Jordan stay with the front fight. I'm just keeping an eye on these two. But what a scrap we're watching here on this last lap. If you spot anything, Jack, let me know because I can press my replay button. And go back and have a look. But four fish has just lost a bit of time through the chicane. He's now four tenths to the to the negative, shall we say, or to the bad, into the hairpin. Into the hairpin they go. Nothing doing. Rally mm -hmm. Matt and Bumper Cam Bob side by side as they approach the turn twelve. Oh, can you have a watch this? Bumper Cam Bob down the inside. Matt looking for the switchback. Not quite getting it right though. There to go then, the drivers, the front two are going through this final corner, they're on their approach. Les ducking and diving as is Fourfish. Fourfish will be looking for that run. He hasn't got it. How much will he get slipstream wise? Probably not enough. As we come up to the checker flag, it is going to be Next Gen Les who takes the victory at Kyoto, followed by Four Fish. And it's looking like it's Bruce Lee Harding to complete the podium. We do have a Newsham driver on the podium, which is good to see. Fantastic drive by him as he gets rid of his penalty. Clear in that penalty, which he's got rid of. Bumper Bob, Bob fourth. Great battle between those two. They had a really good fight. White DYR six, Stevie Q seventh. Wace has been rapidly caught by Jeremy Dunlop. Yeah. And Joe Dunlop beats him because of his Waze's well, penalties. Pe Peculiar how he left it to the last minute for Waze. Snav, I think, obviously had a uh, made a mistake somewhere to be 10 seconds off that battle, but he will have a front row start for the next race. And here comes Matt Marshall, who gets pole position for next race and fastest lap to four fish. Wow, that was a fantastic fight, but you've got to give credit to next gen Les. He takes the race victory for the round two, or rather race three, 
at Kyoto. He just got his line right, timed it well to get that overtake. What a race that was. Absolutely. Let's put the results up because I can do live results whilst I'm here. Provis all provisional, obviously. Uh, so Les walks away 21 points. It's Fourth has only lost one point to, to Les in that respect. Um, because he's got both the bonus points. Bruce showing us what he can do in the third. That's it's a good showing that from Bruce, especially after the lag of Majore. Mm. That's good for him, absolutely good for him. The event settings have been changed for grid based on previous results. I'm just letting the drivers know racing start in five minutes, so twenty one seventeen will get things on the way. Oof. So obviously we're in this sort of interim period of time at the moment whilst we wait for the Obviously, everyone just have a quick break, nip to the loo if they need to, whatever it may be. But we will start at 21.17. Jordan, don't know if there's been any comments in the Twitch chat at all, but you know, hopefully you anyone got any predictions for race two? It's certainly going to be thrilling to watch. Yeah, a couple of things. Obviously, trying to do not too happy. He's been having problems at the moment. Um, it's really unfortunate for Dave. Not really had the chance to express D himself in this series, and he's certainly got speed. <laughs> D, D Whitehouse um, saying "oh" for beep, beep, beep. Obviously, a few choice words in that comment. Um, and Just Stevie, yeah, St Stevie Q asking if he had an had an argument with a wall. Uh, <laughs> D Whitehouse said, "Yeah, he, ta he tapped the brakes and it launched him sideways, straight to the wall." And he was right; he was catching third at the time. He was, he was, and that was a potential podium on for D Whitehouse after if he'd been able to have caught Bruce, obviously. But we're speaking of hypotheticals, and I don't know. One thing I did notice is Dave was running one brake bias to the rear, as opposed to a couple of others running two, maybe, and some even three. How did you so, find that out? Well, that's impressive information ah, to know. Ah, yeah, I've got a, got a couple of little icons that I've just flicked through um, from my side of it. Just sort of basically, I was watching what the drivers were doing earlier on in practice. <laughs> um, so it seems to have. So that seems to be the case. Well, again, Bob just saying he needs a drink, so that's fine. We'll wait for him to enter. Joey Dunlop oh, saying he's running three on front. Three on front. I mean, it's down to style. I mean, you can see that that last corner when Les was leading the race, fending off four fish. He backed the car absolutely into the corner. Four fish couldn't get a run because he hit the back of Les. Mm. So, obviously, Les definitely running a, a sort of more squirrely under braking type of setup as opposed to everyone else running maybe a one or a two rear bait bias. Or Jerry is running that front three. A uh, little update top three of the championship. Uh, Four fish and next gen Les are now joint leaders uh, provisionally at the moment after that race. Uh, with bumper cam Bob in third on 44, 10 points behind. Obviously, Fido not scoring this race. Uh, putting in 37 in fourth. He is the highest placed Newsham driver currently. Hmm. Looking pretty good then. So I will return in a moment myself.
So I should be having that interim period as Jack returns. Hmm. Yeah, I think with I think looking at everything at the moment, it's lobby two, race two, sorry, rather, is looking looking very interesting for the for the start. Obviously if we remember the last week at Lego Maggiore, Snav had a huge defensive task on his hands when he started on the front row. He's on the front row again, obviously alongside Mad Marshall this time. So I'm really curious to see how those two decide to give it a good whirl. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if Traumatic Dave may be returning to race. If he is, that would put him at the back anyway, wouldn't it? Based on... It's not, it's not the back of the grid, but it'd be good to have him racing. He's a, he's a good driver, Dave, and... So it's the, the only league competing at the moment. So uh, I can't I can't remember if he competes. I don't think he competes in anything else currently. I don't believe he does. No, uh -huh. I think you know. Whilst we're here, Jordan, obviously a, a couple of facts for people who might be watching at home if they don't know much about Kyoto or anything in general about Japan. Uh, Kyoto used to be the old capital of Japan, obviously before Tokyo uh, came to be the main centre province. And Kyoto's got quite. A huge amount of history really you know the imperial council used to be uh, based in kyoto and a number of different other sort of areas as well it's a wonderful wonderful city wonderful region lots of different reasons to to visit the the country of course but the main one being that you know if you're interested in your martial arts the, the culture of samurai funnily enough comes from from kyoto that's where they were originally based way back when so a lot of history about the place and GT Sports seems to have added to a bit of that as well yeah um, Traumatic Dave is firing his PS4 back up which means Jack you get the joy of a manual grid setup as Mad Marshall has decided to do Kyoto Yamagiwa re reverse oh that's good Uh, Way saying last week he had the glitch on the reverse grid he ended up last even though he DNF'd that wasn't a glitch that was Genuinely correct, I believe. If you see, if you DNF in the race, you don't get start the start on the front. So we'll wait for Traumatic Dave to enter. Then, it's providing that he's booting up his PlayStation again, we'll also. We've seen, we can see that Bubble Camp Bob is in, so we're a couple of minutes. I'll just let everyone know that Traumatic Dave is re entering just so that they know. It's interesting, Matt Marshall looks like he's doing some practice starts with a bit of weaving and has entered the pit lane in the reverse direction, which is a very good effort. <laughs> Yeah, I think one thing I noticed from earlier on, actually, when, when you were watching the very start, Jordan, was that Mad Marshall didn't get the best of launches. It seemed to be that he was a few... I don't know what happened with him. He, he, he was quite distanced at the start going through turn one. He was about a second behind, oh, I think, so maybe I think I've he might have used the reason for traction you. control. Or... Yeah, he's not got any traction control on. That might be it. That, it doesn't help. I mean, if Mad Marshal is, is listening to this, turn on your traction control to one. Mm. Genuinely, turn it on. It's pretty much what everyone does. Even the top drivers like Herocram, Philo will do it, um, Carter Boy and the McGann's, they all use traction control at the start and they keep their foot planted and then they turn it off once they're up into second gear or once they're happy in first that it's not going to wheel spin. And there you go. I, I think Mad Marshall is listening to this because he's now trying it. Oh, that's good news. One interesting thing that's happened is that I think it's messed up the grid order. So, Jordan, how were we looking? How should we be looking? Right, let's have a look. I see a bit of admin work. Uh, so, at the front of the pack should be Mad Marshall. Mm -hmm. And then Followed Snav. By Snav. Then it's Waze in third. Jerry Dunlop fourth. Yeah, Stevie Q will be fifth. Be good to see how Stevie Q gets on in fifth. He's a quick driver. Uh, D White House in, in sixth. Sixth. Uh, Rally Matt 
Seventh. Yeah. Bumper Cam Bob in eighth. Bruce Lee Harding, Fall yeah, Fish, fish. Les, Les, Traumatic and Dave. Traumatic Dave, yeah. So that's all sorted. Everyone has entered. So, as long as Traumatic Dave is ready to rock and roll. He, Preferably, if everyone goes to the circuit, we know everyone's ready to be fair. But... I see some people just happy to wait in the pits. That's okay, though. They're all entered, so shall we get things underway, Jordan? Uh, I believe so. It's traumatic. Yeah, Traumatic Dave is out and about running, so he's definitely here. So, yeah. Here we go, then. Race start. So, 20 minutes of this second race will be starting shortly. Did you see a bit of lag right, from Dramatic right. Dave, so not a good start, but hopefully he holds in. I'll leave it up to you, Jack, for the race number two. Here we go then. Getting ready for the start. 20 minutes on the right hand side, as per for race number four, round two. We wait for the lights to flicker on. Seems to be holding them for some time, but here they come. Here come the numbers. And the race is live, underway for race number four, and it's a great start from Snab. He's got a fantastic one, and he's already into P1. Mad Marshall currently in second place, Wace in third at the moment. But it's Snav who's got himself into the lead at turn number one. It's a great start for him. Mad Marshall's in second, Wace third. Stevie Q on the outside is already up to fourth. Good start for him. D Whitehouse is in fifth. Dunlop sixth, but he's been pressured by Rally Matt already. Bumper Cam Bob in eighth, and then round and right at the back. Bruce Lee Harding has dropped at the start. Not sure what's happened to him, Jordan. Yeah, he didn't get the best getaway. Uh, whether, again, he had a wrong traction setting, but he's got a bit of work to do. And up towards turn six we go. And Snav Wait under pressure. To second. And like you say, Jordan, pressuring for first place already. He's on the inside. You know that Wace is going to go for it. These two also in the same team, but as we've already seen in race one, seems like team orders are a no-show. And Stevie Q looking to the middle of the pair. He's going to get squeezed brave. out. Dee Whitehouse on the inside as well, looking to try and threaten for a move at the inside. Snap still got the lead, though. Good racing from him. He's held on so far. Stevie Q right in the midst of all that. There's three wide at the back. Bumper Camp Bob and Four Fish and Les all fighting as well for position. Traumatic. Dunlop's gone backwards. That's Traumatic Dave as well, right in there with Les and Joey Dunlop. He's looking down the inside of Les. And Bruce, and Bruce Lee, Lee Harding, the the that's game. a hell of a move. Uh, he, he, has he just done three cars, uh, if I'm correct, uh, Jack, into the hairpin? He's definitely two of them, I saw. The third one, I think he was already passed on the way through, but that's nonetheless a great overtake. Snap still leads, Stevie Q in second, he's got past Wace. That's They're still side by side. Move. They're still side by side, though, up to turn 15. Deep Whitehouse looking for a little gap up the inside. Snap's got very, very deep into the corner. In fact, he's allowed Stevie Q up the lead. Snap, yeah, I'm just a little bit deep on the brakes. Almost like if he was trying to square the corner up, but now they're going to be three wide into turn one. Three and they're four wide, wide four behind. Wide. Bumper Camp Bob, Rally Matt, D Whitehouse leaning on one another. Rally Matt's been pushed out wide. Bumper Camp Bob's gone out wide. The front two are also leaning on one another, but good driving from those two further up the field. Yeah, we're Les st staying with the lead at the moment on, on the cameras, and it is an absolute class of driving from everyone in this field. Just the odd door up here and there. Stevie Cooper runs a bit wide, ways gets through. Now they're three points. <laughs> Again. <laughs> it was a poor run. D White has had a fantastic run. Bumper Cam Bob on the outside now. Bumper Cam Bob, no doubt, going to try that wider line that he did in race one. Leslie on the inside of Stevie Q. It's two by two by two by oh, four. Ways and snap a little bit of contact on the exit as Ways gets into the lead. Matt's gone through. Here comes D White House 7 and an absolute freight train of minis. Oh, oh contact oh, between ping pong. That's very close between the two cars. Three cars. Waste still leads, there's absolute sandwiching going on. Snap's been hit by his family member from Bruce Lee Harding. And there's a bit of ghosting, or a bit of lag, strangely, for Four Fish. Not sure what happened, but he's up to fifth. And Les, through all of that, is up to fourth. I don't think Snap's going to be too happy with that. Les seemingly coming across in the braking zone. 
Riley Matt's got the lead now. He's got in front of Waste. He sort of barged his way past Waste, running a rear brake bias of three, just for the record. But these four, this quartet, have got themselves ahead of Bob, four fish, DBQ. Dramatic Dave's up to eighth, having a fantastic run so far. It's now ninth, Bruce Lee tenth. So it's the quartet, then leading the sextet, which is a, a word for six, if you're wondering. <laughs> But Les now on the inside of D Whitehouse has got a lot of momentum and probably enough to try and go past Wace if he's brave enough. Matt though pulling away. Yeah, Matt should start. Oh, Les just nipping it down the inside. And there Past goes D Whitehouse. A bit of a rub as well. It's all very. <laughs> DVQ very wide. It's all getting a bit touchy-feely at the moment in the minis. Very much everyone leaning on everyone. That is absolutely the only way that you can describe it. But Les just gone purple in the first sector. Already got the gap. He's already taken two temps out of Rally Matt. And he's brought, frustratingly for Matt, after it looked like he was trying to get away, he's bringing D. Oh, Les in the wall! Interesting rejoin as well. Ways joining him. So that's another oh, D Weiss. White House. Oh, this is not going to end well. <laughs> oh, it's free wide. That's not going to end well. It's four now, and that's four fish all over the oh. curve. Weiss has hit Stevie Q is the wall. I think we'll have to Stevie. go back and look at that from Weiss's point of view. It looked all wrong. Weiss obviously followed Les into the wall in that earlier turn six incident, and that has just thrown the race on its head, and it's allowed Rally Matt to get 1.3 on D White House. Let's go back and have a look at that. Oh, his waist has just fired deep snav into the wall, out, out of the hairpin. What do we see from Waste's point of view, Jordan? Well, let's have a look. So he's obviously run wide out of six. Come back on. This bumper cam Bob's got to run. Oh... It's a difficult one to see, really. But Waze has gone down the inside of Fourfish, but he's also got Les down the inside of him. So it looks like he's started pushing Fourfish a bit wide, ended up taking to the grass. Obviously, no traction on the grass, and it's fired him straight out into the side of Stevie Q. And then, obviously, he's come into the hairpin uh, and forced his own teammate off. Mm. Although, it, there did look like a bit of lag in it, did it? so... There could be a bit of lag at play in the instant with Snab. But as you say, Running Matt running away with this at the moment. 1.2 in the lead. 1.2. Tell you one, one other driver is having a great show so far. Traumatic Dave up to sixth. Yeah, and he's hassling four fish. Traumatic Dave isn't slow. That is for certain, and he's showing what sort of pace he does have here. Remember, he's had to start at the back of the pack for not finishing race one. In fact, he didn't even get the chance to start. No, and at the moment, D. Whitehouse was fast slap of the race of 54.9. That was last time out as well. So, does D. Whitehouse whisper it, have the pace to catch Rally Matt? That would be some effort from D. Whitehouse. That's quite a big gap to try and take out, but. Like I say, it's 12 minutes 45 left to go in a session. We're not even halfway. There's been so <laughs> much action. Bumper Camp Bob now has Les and Fourfish for company. Bruce has got past Traumatic Dave in the meantime. Stevie Q also up into eighth place. And as you say, Can't Les. Just behind. Yeah, Shane Les on the back. Looks like Joey Dunlop has Snav for company. D. Whitehouse is catching Rally Matt. D. Whitehouse has got the gap to less than a second, so the Club 100 driver has an opportunity. Bumper Cam Bob currently fending off Les. Now, what will Les do here? What would be the right tactic to take? Would he try and fight it or let Bob try and go with them? Ah, uh, it's. Well, in retrospect, you, you kind of want to work with the drivers around you because at this point of the race, you've got a lot of time on your hands, and if you can catch the guys ahead of you. Both of you can benefit and you can fight it out later. On the other side, on the flip side of that though, if you get past and get to the drivers out of you first, you've got that first crack so you can try and get away yourself. 
So it's the two sides of a coin. I tend to work with a driver until about five minutes to go. Once you hit five minutes, then you start battling with them. Because that way. See you that, uh, yeah, that, absolutely. I understand where you're coming from, Jordan. And I think oh. Les has got. Oh! Les all over the curb, hits the side of Bumper Cam Bob, and Bumper Cam Bob's going to potentially lose another place on the brakes. Bumper Cam Bob won't be happy with that at all. Ah, uh, unfortunately, not a lot less could have done then. He, he lost the rear on the curb. He came on the curb and just clipped the grass with the rear right and with the weight all on that right hand side. The rear was always going to step like that, so unfortunately, not a lot less can do. And luckily, no one's exactly. Luckily, Bumper Cam Bob didn't exactly go off into the barrier, so all in all. No, he didn't. I think it's just an unfortunate bit of wrong place, wrong time racing there. Yeah, he, he still, nonetheless, he still won't be pleased with the sort of side impact because they were side by side, the pair of them, and he's lost an opportunity to try and fight back to take third place. Still got time, of course, but 10 minutes to go in a session. Les now up to third, 1.4 to D Whitehouse, who hasn't, is stalled in his progress in catching rally at the minute. It just seems like Matt's starting to try and manage that gap a little bit now at that second mark. Because even though DY will still have the slipstream, it's not massive at this point in time. He still get a little bit, so in theory he should still be catching Rally Matt. But obviously around the corners, if you're half a second, you, you'll keep the slipstream through all the corners as well. But at this point, through the corners, you won't have that sort of slipstream effect as great as you'd like it. So if Matt can step up his game through those corners, he should be able to maintain that gap at the moment. Just looking at where everyone else is on the circuit, obviously our previous race leaders, Mad Marshall, the provisional pole man, he's down in 12th at the moment. Uh, Wace, who briefly led, he's down in 9th, he's been gassed by Stevie Q. It's now in 11th. Don't think he'll be so Mad happy well, with this yeah, race. Like you say. But Interesting Bumpercam point to note. Fish side by side. Yeah, and full fish, fast purple sector in sector 2. Nice and clean between the two. Good overtake from four fish. He's up to fourth. Interesting point to note as well. Bruce Lee Harding, Traumatic Dave. I've been kind of keeping them on them in the background. And Traumatic Dave hasn't. He's close enough to look for a move, but he hasn't really made any inroads. And I think he's got the similar idea to us, Jack, working with Bruce to catch up with the the three ahead of them because the three ahead of them aren't exactly working together. No, that's true, but they have managed to now get half a second on bumper cam Bob. Oh, Fullfish really cut that corner then. I'd be surprised if that wasn't a penalty. I'd be very surprised if it wasn't. There sure it enough, is, there one goes second. Clicks on. He's out wide he's trying to, mm, He's trying yeah. to clear that as well. Well, that's going to cost him a lot of a fair few places there. I have to say, it's very good sportsmanship from Four Fish um, to consider that. But like you say, Jordan, it's dropped him down to seventh. He's been overtaken now by Traumatic Dave. That's going to give Les a nice leg up in the championship. Well, for now, as it as it live stands, but we've still got eight minutes left of this race, which <laughs> is the equivalent of about four laps, possibly five. Absolutely. Rally Matt, the gap between the two of them is just one second. They've been separated by and a Matt, tenth, the pair of them. Matt's just put a purple first sector. It's only by five thousandths, but it's still a purple sector nonetheless. We're, we're track there's four sectors, which is uncommon for for most tracks. Normally it's just the three. Unless you go to the North Life, in which case it's 13. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, the only sport that tends to have four sectors is the MotoGP. Mm. They do have four sectors. They do. Les is purple in the middle sector, so he's got his skates on. And D White has picked up a second and a half penalty. There you go. He must have picked that up through the chicane. Bumpercam Bob just a second behind. Bruce Lee Hardin's fifth. Four fish has got past. Traumatic Dave. He's fighting going into turn 12. Nice tight line that from Dave. But it's I've noticed of... with Dave, he's taking a different gear to everyone else through turns, turn 12. He dips it to second and up to third. I mean, you can dip it, I mean, to because you 
keep the revs high to try and get the momentum because some drivers might find that third is just a bit too low and it bogs a little bit too much but the problem is that you rev it in second if you don't get the gear change spot on when it needs to be in second it bogs down anyway as you go into third so it's a little bit of six one way half dozen the other Mad Marshall just got himself acquainted with the wall there not what he wanted D Whitehouse closing the gap just inch by inch, tenth by tenth. He's just just coming out a little bit now as they come out of turn one, but it's just below a second. He's going to have to try and catch and clear that penalty. It's going to be a tall order, but D Whitehouse currently running in second place, and he, he would take that right now. I'm fairly certain he would. He wants the win, but he wouldn't be disappointed with second. Once again, another purple first sector, a tenth quicker than the best so far, which is Les with a 154.2. Bumper camp Bob went purple through t sector one as well, so he's got his he's got his foot down now as well. The top four are all sort of spanned out by a couple of by a second or so, apart from the front two. DYO still purple through sector two. We're going to follow in this lap. He's, but yeah, he's still not reeling in mass. As soon as he gets to the chicane, he loses time. So it's almost like through the flat out sections, because D White House has that bit of slipstream, he's just nicking it. And as soon as he gets to the braking phase of turn number eight and nine, he just loses it. He's back down to 1.3. Mm. Closest fight on circuit, if you can call it much of a fight, is Traumatic Dave and Stevie Q in 7th and 8th. Everyone else sort of just split a little bit. Less than five minutes to go now in this race. Oh, Deep White House is on the grass. Just got away with that. Had a little... His rear right wheel went onto the grass, but I fear he's now 1.7 off the back of Rally Matt. And Les is within a second of him now. He will smell second place. He'll take every chance he gets, Les. With, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna say three laps to go. Three laps to go. You're absolutely right. So we're gonna get eleven laps out of this race. And Dean Whitehouse still has one point four seconds to clear. Now, if he does not clear that, that can end up at two seconds because the way it works in Gran Turismo is it doesn't matter. He won't add on one point four. It will round it up to the next second. So even if you finish the race with a 0.1 of a penalty, you'll get one second's worth of penalties. Mm. It's going to be close if Mad Marshall gets three laps. Very close on his on his timings there, but Matt, I have to say, while he's in the lead, he's so far he's driven really well, has to be said, but look at the gap for second. On board with... Uh, Day with D White House looking back and we're gonna be looking forward in a minute, I fit. Because Les down the inside, thank you very much. But look at the easy, run D White like. House has got. It's a good run, but if these two start fighting again, you're gonna allow Bumper Cam Bob right back into this. Bumper Cam Bob, I'm just watching him at the moment. See that Les on the inside. D White House looking for that. Better line just tags the back of Les, gives him a bit of a boost. Good idea from D House, but just probably executed a touch too early. Okay, now for Matt's gone out, two point four, and Bob has joined them. Once again, though, D Whitehouse on the verge of a of a podium. Can have to try and clear this penalty, Jordan, somehow, if he wants to get another podium. Or rather, to get that first podium, I should be saying. Yeah. Everyone else on circuit separated by at least a second, so this is your closest fight. Two laps to go. On board bumper cam. On board bumper cam Bob, as I pressed the wrong button. They're all, both of them are going to have a really good momentum on Les as they come through 4 5, 5 being this right hander. You see them all converging. Which way does D Whitehouse go? He's going to look right, look left. He's still on the outside. Les defending. The approach to 6. And look at the line Bumper Cam Bob's going to have, although Bumper Cam Bob's not exactly got it tucked in early enough, in my opinion. He'll oh, have a good I run, disagree. though. <laughs> He's tucked it got in a later. Very good run. 
Going to be on the inside, then faints to the right. D. Whitehouse can't move across on him. He's right there in the breaking zone. That is literally one mini size gap that was left from D by D. Whitehouse. Couldn't have been any closer. <laughs> But that's just allowed Les to get a small gap on D Whitehouse. And, the, and he's still got a 1.4 oh, second penalty. Oh, Bob is very wide into turn 12. He's looking to square the corner up, but yeah, that's not done him any favours. If you were D Whitehouse at this moment in time, you would try and clear that penalty coming into the hairpin. Try and clear. Oh, he's cut oh, the corner. And that's he's cut that. out on that. That's another second. There you go. That's that. He's almost now better off till was taking the penalty. It's three seconds, so if you look to the gap back to Bruce Lee Harden, who's in fifth place, he's now been joined by four fish last few laps. Yeah, 3.1 to bumper cam Bob there. It's going to be very close. Yeah. Well, this is the final lap. D.Y. is probably better off serving his penalty on the track. Hmm. Well, yeah, he's, he's been joined by Traumatic Dave in 8th place I say well. that as D. Wiles was just looking to the outside of Les through turn 1. Didn't quite pan out because obviously being on the outside, doing more distance. So Bruce, will he know that D. Wiles has got a penalty? It's quite far away on circuit. He'll see a little red flash above the, above the driver's name, but he won't know exactly what that lap is the checkered flag is out mad marshall will see the checkered flag mad marshall finishing 12th and it's a shame because on the results it will show him as a lap down even though he's not actually a lap down he's only 42 seconds meanwhile the battle for second is still right on as we enter the seven uh, the, the eight nine chicane bruce has lost time so d whitehouse's worst result result is going to be fourth at at worst, unless the worst genuinely does happen to him. Is he going to defend on the inside? No, Bumper Camp Bob's going to look for the move. D. Whitehouse looking to squeeze. Ooh, that was that very was late. Very late indeed. I'm going, to have a, I'm going to have a very quick look at that. So up into the hairpin. Yeah, very late. So I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up with a student on that. That was very late. Slap. Paul Fisher's got I'm Bruce, sure. but I, we should cut back to Rally Matt, though, because he's driven absolutely excellently for race two. He's uh, been superb around Kyoto Driver Park. He's going to take the win. He's got a big enough of a gap. He can start celebrating now if he wants to, but it's Rally Matt who wins number race four at Kyoto Driving Park. Great drive for him. Les second. Bumper Cam Bob takes that third place. D Whitehouse will take fourth despite penalties. Paul Fisher fifth. Bruce Lee's sixth. And then what happened there at the end? Traumatic Dave takes seventh. Because I believe Stevie Q in ways may have had some penalties unserved. Joey Dunlop Stevie will take Q tenth. Was sideways across the line. Yeah, they hand break it normally over the line. As Snav's about to do to finish eleventh. <laughs> Whew. Had a nice, quiet part in the middle, but tell you, one driver had a quiet race in general was up front. It was Rally Matt 85. He's going to be ecstatic with that. First win for him in the mini league, and that's going to throw him right up the championship standings. Come next week's race. Yes. Uh, so, Rally Matt takes the full 21 points standard points available Les taking fastest lap to go with his second place uh, which is good news for him in the championship gives him 19 points in total uh, Bumper Camp Bob takes 15 points 13 head the way of D Whitehouse 7 uh, with 12 on four f for four fish 11 for Bruce Lee Harding There we 10 for Traumatic Dave, who, once again, didn't have a race one, but has had a very nice race two. Um, nine points go the way of Stevie Q. Eight for Waze. Seven for Joey Dunlop. Six for Snav. 
and five, five for Mad Marshall. Obviously, all, all these are provisional results, as me and Jack will probably stress, because obviously each steward's inquiries at post-race can occur. Uh, they, they can. And I also know the next racetrack for next week. Yeah, next week's going to be a very interesting circuit to go to, isn't it, Jordan? It's an interesting I mean, the McGann's have gone round it. Uh, I know that much. Um, very, very interesting. It's a Sardinia Road Track B next week. Um, interesting. So lots of overtaking opportunities. Massive long straight to begin with. Um, and the corners are perfect for switchback. So again, it's going to be a mighty, mighty race. Um, that is for certain. Absolutely. So that is it for the race, or rather round number two, race four, at the Coast versus Newsham Mini Cooper Cup. It's been a wonderful event as always. We'll be here same time next week, broadcasting from roughly 20 past eight for round number three, races five and six. That's going to be excellent around Sardinia Road Track B. But from Jordan, it's good night. Good night. And it's good night from me and wherever you might be.